<clears throat> My parents were part of a generation that believed in the possibility of utopia. So they were part of a revolution. Both believe in a better Cuba and in a better world. I was emotionally educated on those beliefs. Then I grew up and I saw the contradictions between the official Cuban propaganda and reality. I saw the complexity amongst government arguments and my own personal experiences. I decided to become an artist. My art navigates between the utopic and the real, between the promise and the accomplish. It is about the political imaginary. But what defined my work and me as an artist was something that happened 20 years ago, and I have kept since then. I felt today was a good opportunity to share it with you. In 1993, I was a young artist who decided to do a newspaper as an artwork. I invited all the artists, critics, to join the collaboration for the newspaper, and this work took the life on its own. So people started to read it, photocopy, and distribute it everywhere. The authorities took notice of this. I think what was unacceptable for them was not so much the content of the newspaper itself, but the gesture I have done, which is actually proposing independent press. This was 20 years ago, and is still today an illegal act. Immediately, the Arts Council called me very gently to advise me, please, to not further in this newspaper crazy project. And of course, as soon as I left those offices, I ran to the printer because I was actually in the process of finishing the second issue, which was even more political than the first one. My father at that time was an ambassador, and he was called back in to take care of this little problem. He came to my home, told me, please give me all the remaining newspapers, and say, let's go for a ride. We got in the car. He brought me to a house where two officers of the secret police from the Ministry of the Interior were waiting us so they could interrogate me in front of him. I never revealed, of course, who printed the newspaper or where I was doing this. I knew this would have consequences. I look at my father. I couldn't understand the expression on his face, but we left in silence and never talked about this. It was then when censorship became the core of my work. It was then when I understood the difference between art that is done about politics and art that is done in a political matter, art that works politically. que ha sido despenalizada la discrepancia política. Seremos testigos de un hecho trascendental. De numerosas gavetas saldrán proyectos económicos, políticos, sociales, culturales y de diversa índole que han permanecido ocultos por temor a ser malinterpretados. Proyectos que habrán sido elaborados por gente seria, profesional, honesta, inteligente e informada, pero que por ser respetuosa a la ley y amante de su familia no han querido ponerse a sufrir las penalizaciones que todos conocemos. Como ventaja adicional se reducirá la simulación what was interesting by being in that place was that when nobody was talking on the microphone, it almost felt that the whole space and the whole energy became a monument to a void left by a leader. Sometimes it also felt like a monument of collective fear. I feel this is the expression that says best what this is about, what this experience was about. Somebody come to the stage and say, I hope one day freedom of speech doesn't have to be a performance. What you just saw was not a rally, 
was not a political rally, was not an activist moment. It was one of my performances. It was done at an international art event in Havana. One minute of free speech, an open microphone in Cuba means something else. People say for the first time in public, after 50 years, things they were not there to say unless you were a very close friend. They were saying in a very slow voice and with a lot of fear. Only in another event, it could only another event could provide this space for freedom. This is why I believe so fiercely and so intensely in art as a nation for social change. Art as a rehearsal for reality. Art as a way to live the future. This event spilled out of the art scene into the street. People were talking about it. It even became a kind of an urban legend. And it was very funny when I had some of my neighborhood approaching me seeing, saying, like, have you heard what happened recently? Somebody put a microphone and people were saying crazy things and I'm not there to imagine what happened to those people. And I said, yes, I know. But this art piece would not happen in the same way if it were done before or after that precise moment. Because it responded to a specific political tension. This kind of art is what I call political timing specific. Art and politics have many things in common. They both imagine the future, they both use emotions, and manage the power of symbols. Art, like politics, affects people. And I am interested in that space where they both coincide. So we can transform social affect into political effectiveness. In my work, I try to stay situations that look real, as real as possible, so that people who are in the audience, in the role of you know, uh, a passive audience, can transform into active citizen. This happened in a museum. These are not actors. This is the mounted police, to whom I gave the instructions to use the crowd control techniques with the audience of the museum. It was an unannounced performance. So people behave freely and accordingly to their own social conditioning, according to their own political memories and experiences. This is what I call arte de conducta, behavior art or conduct art. This performance was repeated six times, and only once, only one person asked and questioned the police action. My art is done realistically and become part of reality. Our reality is changing. It's becoming mobile and global. But for that new global world, we also need to build a global civic society. Globalization should not be only about economy, but about the freedom and rights people have to move and to decide where and when they want to contribute with their work and their knowledge. In a global world, we should all be citizens, because dignity has no nationality. But these days, objects cross borders with more rights and protection than people. Immigrants are censored. They can be complete as persons, because they are not allowed to have rights. They are not allowed to be political subjects. This is why the project I'm working on right now is building an immigrant movement international. The way we work in it is we use activism, we, in which we combine creative knowledge with practical knowledge 
in order to create the political knowledge. But to do political art is also to do art that talks to the politicians. It is also to enter their territory. I was recently invited to the United Nations as a cultural expert to work with others on the first cultural uh, rights and freedom of a speak, uh, artistic freedom of a speech document. I heard so many different reiterations of censorship from so many different places and with so many different justifications that I make me remember my father. I finally made sense of the expression on his face when I was interrogated by the state police. On our last conversation, he said, I'm proud of you. I learned from him that confronting censorship makes us stronger. And I hope he understood with my work that art is useful, that through art we can start building a world that works differently. Thank you. <laughs>